Now in this video, I'm just gonna quickly talk about what our next steps are at this point. So I did explain that this section is basically a simple prototype section. And normally if you're prototyping a game, you would start adding enemies and making some simple behavior in there. But at this point, I don't wanna to go to that route because we're gonna basically recreate our whole game once we start using the proper Unity tools. So at this stage, now that you know the basics and you can make a simple little scene where you can move a player around, have collisions, make some objects move, we're gonna start making the final product of our game now. So just a few years ago, if you were to make a 2D sprite-based game or a platformer like this, you would have had to make the whole game the way we've been structuring it, where we drag and drop things in and we move them around manually and we have to use snapping. The only option before that was to either make your own custom tools, which were very advanced and took a lot of time, or you would buy a third-party asset that helped you with it. But now Unity has all of that built in. We have two things we're gonna look at here. The main one is called Tile Map. And what that does is it's gonna allow us to take all of our sprite images and basically paint a level with those tiles. Instead of having to drag one tile at a time, we can just paint with them. And then we add colliders after the fact. Now you're gonna see this is a very powerful tool and it saves you a lot of time when we create a level. And that's why I mentioned, I didn't want you to go too crazy with creating a huge level that we're gonna to have to remove later because it's much easier in tile map. But if you don't know these core basics of how to move things around, how to snap objects, it really limits you in the future. So that's why I wanted to teach that first. It may seem a bit more boring, but I think it's gonna really benefit you in the long run. Now, the other tool we're gonna to start using is Cinemachine, which is basically a full package of cameras built into Unity. In our situation, we're only gonna use one type of camera in it, which is more basic for a platformer. But this package allows you to make full cinematics, almost like a movie in your game. You can add dollies to your cameras and animate them. You can do all of that built in with no code for the most part. So you're gonna see how simple it is to add that camera very shortly. The other thing I'm gonna show you right after this is there's a newer long-term support version of Unity that came out. So I'm gonna show you how to make a full backup of your project so you know how to do that in the future and also how to upgrade your project to a newer version of Unity. So right after this section, we're gonna do that first and then we're gonna carry on and start making our final product. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can make a full backup of our project before we install a new version of Unity and then upgrade it to that one. So if we open the Unity Hub here, we have our course and it shows the path. Now, if you wanna to go to that, you can just right click on it, select Show and Explorer. And it's gonna bring up a file explorer window with that folder. So we talked about this before, that inside here, it's just a normal file folder structure. So there's nothing special about this folder as far as Windows is concerned. It's just a normal folder with some files. So we can actually copy this whole folder to make a backup. And there are other ways you can back up files. There's a lot of things like version control. If you're not familiar with that, that's something you can look into later after this course. But there's things like that where it'll save the changes you make in your project, but not the whole project itself in one setting. What we're doing here is we're basically just making a full copy of this folder. So this library folder here is one of the biggest parts of our project. If you can see on mine, it's 1.49 gigabytes already. This is all metadata and data that Unity saves to make working with our project easier and faster. It's not data that has to be backed up. So at this point, don't follow along with me, just watch this part. I'll tell you when you can follow along again, but I'm gonna demonstrate this library folder, if we delete this folder, so I'm gonna remove mine here. Okay, so I have no library folder. If I now go and open this project, it's still gonna run and it's gonna recreate that library. The thing is, it takes a long time. So this isn't something you wanna do on a normal basis to try to free up space or anything because the next time you open that project, Unity has to spend all that time recreating it and it's still gonna take up the same amount of size. 
The reason I'm demonstrating this is so that when we do a backup, we can just skip that folder because if you have to restore that backup, Unity will recreate that data. Okay, so we're just gonna give it some time here. And as I mentioned, it's gonna take quite a while. Okay, so now the project's open. It took several minutes, even for this very small project. So that's just a demonstration. Now I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna open Unity Hub again. And now if I go back to show and explore, if I go to my platformer course, Notice the library folder is back and it's basically the same size. So with that in mind, now what we could do to make a backup is we can either just copy this entire folder, which will include the library. So now this point you can follow along here now. So just right click on your course name folder, select copy, and then just right click on the window and select paste. And this is going to create a whole new folder, which is a complete exact copy of our project. Now, because of that library folder being in there, it's, it's going to take a little while. Okay. So now I have this folder and it says copy at the end. What I'm going to do is just slow click on it. I'm just going to rename it instead of copy. I'm going to call it backup. And then what's kind of a good practice. If you did something like this, you may want to just put a date or something here. So in this case, I'm just going to put Aug 18, 2023. Now, as I mentioned, there are lots of alternatives to backups. If you're looking at getting into more of a backup system, you're going to want to look into version control. But if you just want to periodically make a full backup of your game, you know, maybe copy it to an external hard drive or something like that, this is a pretty good method and it works quite well. Now, when I leave it on my hard drive here, I just leave the, the library folder in there. That way, if I do ever have to load that back up, it doesn't take long and I don't have to recreate it. But what I tend to do is if I make a bunch of these backups over time, and then I'm going to copy them to an external drive or a different place, I'll go in and I'll delete the library folder first inside just the backup. So if I did this here, Now, when I go back and look, if I right click and go to properties on that folder, instead of 1.4 gigabytes, this is 43 megabytes or sorry, 57 megabytes. So it's drastically different. So if I was to copy this to a backup drive, I could store thousands of these different backups and it wouldn't take up much space. And then say if I did have to load up that backup, once I'm in Unity Hub here, I could just go to open, add project from disk, and then I would just find that project. So in this case here, I would look for my platformer course, backup August 18th, and I would just select that one, add project. And then when I click on that, it's gonna open up the backup version, not the original. So I'm just gonna remove this backup as I don't need it here. All right, so continuing from the last video, we're going to install the newer version of Unity now, and then we're going to upgrade our project to it. So that backup step is critical. Anytime you do an upgrade on a project, there is a lot of possibility of things going wrong and the project not working how you want or not working, period. So a simple project like we have, we're not going to run into any issues on this one. Now, the reason I know that is because I know the changes between the current version we're using and the new version of Unity that we're going to upgrade to. And I know anything that changed in that version, we didn't use. We just used very basic scripting and very basic Unity tools. So nothing's going to happen. But what tends to happen on larger projects, when you're using a lot of built-in tools and different functions of Unity and custom functions that you make, the new version might change how it supports or uses those methods and, and tools. If that happens, it's not going to be a simple click a button to upgrade your project and everything works. You're going to have to upgrade your project and spend a lot of time making that work. There's many games out there. Uh, one that comes to mind is Seven Days to Die. When they upgraded to a newer version of Unity for their game, 
It took them, I believe it was months, just to get back to the point they were at after the upgrade. In the long run, it definitely paid off for them. The, the newer graphics, the newer workflow that they got, it was drastically improved, but they had to do a lot of work to make that work. So I just want to stress that usually you don't want to upgrade projects once you start them to a different version, unless you have a very good reason to. So in the case I mentioned with Seven Days to Die, their game was out for many years. They were on a very old Unity version and it was starting to hold them back. So at that point, they decided it was worth the effort to upgrade. For a usual basic game, it's usually not worth the effort or in the case like we're having here, we're not using anything that's gonna be impacted and it's gonna be completely fine. So basically what I'm trying to tell you in a quick way here is if you do wanna to try to upgrade, make sure you make a full backup before you attempt it because things can go very, very wrong. If you don't have that backup, there's no way to go back. It's gone and you have to fix it manually. All right, enough about that. Let's get this install going. So I'm gonna click the install tab here and these are the current versions I have. So right now we're working with the 2021 LTS. There's now a 2022 LTS. So let's click Install Editor. And now here's the official release long-term support versions. So we're gonna install this one. Just gonna hit Install. I'm gonna leave all the defaults. Now we just need to wait for it to finish. Okay, so now that that install is complete, we can go back to the Projects tab. Okay, and where we see our course listed here, we see the editor version. We can just click the arrows and then we have the option to select any of the installed versions we have. So if we select the new 2022 LTS, now we can click the button that says open with 2022. Now we're going to get a warning here. So this tells you basically what I was saying earlier is tells you if you change the editor version, the scripts might change and the project library might be rebuilt, might take some time, which it can take a very long time sometimes. And it basically makes you wanna confirm that you wanna do this. So let's change version. Again, make sure at this point you have a backup of your project just in case. Now you should get a window similar to this. It's gonna say the versions don't match basically gives you more warning here that some packages might not work and other things like that. So let's hit continue. And now we're just gonna wait for it to finish. All right, and now the project's open. You might get this pop-up as well about the materials. You can just click okay. And it's gonna try to re-import them. Okay, so now we have our project open. It didn't load the scene, so we just wanna go to scenes. Let's open our sandbox. And in my case, Sandbox has nothing in it. That might be my fault from previously. I might have saved it under sample scene. So I'm not sure if that's the case, but my sample scene does have everything. So it looks like I probably actually forgot to rename my scene previously, which that's pretty easy here. I can actually delete the sandbox scene. I'm just gonna rename sample scene to sandbox. Okay, so let's just run it, make sure it's still working as it did in the last version. Okay, so I have everything here. We can't double jump. I can't stick to platforms. I'm gonna go try out the restore point or the spawn point. Okay, I spawn at that checkpoint. And I'm just gonna try the next checkpoint here. Okay, so everything's working here. We have our new version of Unity. We're now upgraded to this and we can start working with creating our final game.